Hey everybody and welcome to the Wednesday Night Bible Study here and uh, we're trying some new things with technology so we'll see how all of this works but uh, one of the things I want to do first of all is to just uh, begin our time with a word of prayer. I think I forgot to do that last week. I'm not sure if that's legal when you do a Bible study to uh, do that without um, without having prayer first so we're going to try and do that and uh, hopefully um, like I have said last week, if you have any comments, any questions, or whatever, um, would love to uh, see those comments in the comments section, or uh, also later on um, as you watch this. So let's uh, begin with the word of prayer, shall we? Lord God, we just, uh, I thank you. I thank you for today, and I thank you for the beauty of the weather that we've had out here. Uh, I thank you for the beauty of the, uh, the trees, the fall season. And the fact that we've had a really nice fall season here. I just pray now for your blessing on our time tonight as we start to dig into your word. And uh, just pray these things in your name. Amen. So tonight we begin our actual study into God's word. And we start out uh, with um, the Old Testament. And uh, we're going to start out with Genesis. But before we do that, I want to ask you a question tonight and uh, see how well you're doing. You know, we are in October, and if you're a baseball fan, uh, you are anxiously watching uh, the World Series, or divisional games, I guess, leading up to that. Unfortunately, for those of us in Minnesota and Wisconsin, um, we don't need to worry about our teams winning because. Uh, the Minnesota team wasn't close, and the Wisconsin team lost out here recently. But uh, question for you uh, with the Bible and with baseball. And the question for you is this. Where is baseball mentioned in the Bible? Now, you might think, uh, Pastor Mike, I think you've lost it because the Bible does not mention baseball. And I'm going to disagree with you and say the Bible does indeed mention baseball in it. So I'm going to give you just a minute to think about that. And here's the answer. I hope you guys don't hate me for this. Right away at the very, very beginning of the Bible, it talks about baseball. It says, in the big inning. Yeah, I know. Sorry, I just could not possibly resist that. Well, I suppose I could have. I just chose not to. Anyway, welcome to the Wednesday Night Bible Study, whether you're watching on the uh, Zion site or on the Built with Grace site. We're glad that you could be with us tonight as we dig into the uh, Old Testament. And we're going to start off by, uh, first of all, I want you to know that um, what my plan is, and we'll see how this works out in actual working, is to spend one week on each book of the Old Testament. Um, that may or may not work. We'll see what happens. I know that for Genesis, for example, um, I'm going to be spending three weeks on it. Um, but um, then throughout the rest, I'm hoping to just go one week, just giving us a survey. This isn't intended to be a, an in-depth thing. But what I want to talk about tonight is <clears throat> Genesis 1.1. And uh, again, warning you that I'm not going to go through each verse of the Bible all the way through. That would be difficult. Although there's, you know, I've listened to people do that, and it is amazing of the truths that you can pick out of each uh, book of the Bible, And but we're just not going to have time to do that. Um, <clears throat> but what I want you to think about is, to me, and other scholars that I've read agree with me, um, the four most important words in the entire Bible, whether you go from Genesis all the way to Revelation, the four most important words in the Bible are the first four words of the Bible. In the beginning, God. I want you to think about why that's so important. In the beginning, God. Because this isn't just talking about a time frame here. It's not just talking about the fact that you know God was at the beginning. First of all, when is that? Because God is an eternal being. So how can you say in the beginning, God, when God had no beginning? How can you do that? You can't. So what does it really mean when it says in the beginning, God? I think one of the things we need to realize, and, and this will affect our entire view of the Bible and of Christianity all the way through if we don't grasp this first truth. That is, 
in the beginning God. God is the beginning. God is the center. God is the foundation of everything we do. Down the street from us, uh, they're building a new house. And uh, it doesn't have a basement to it, but it did have a cement slab to it, obviously. Um, that was the foundation. And that entire house, its, it's um, stability, its integrity rests on that foundation. In the beginning was the slab. Well, when we get to the Word of God, when we get to the world, we need to realize what that really means to say in the beginning God, because God is the beginning of, the center of, the foundation of all things. And that's important as we think about all of the issues that we have today, because there's a lot of people that don't believe in God. There's a lot of people that don't believe that God is the God that we say he is. And, and so we need to really think about what that means. You know, last week I showed you this graphic and, um, uh, to me, this graphic, and if you didn't watch last week, we just want to take a minute again to uh, describe this graphic for you. If you see that graphic and you see it almost looks like the Northern Lights, which we won't be able to see tonight because it's cloudy here, but it almost looks like the Northern Lights with with that arcing uh, of the, the lines. And, and if, you, if you could get a close look at that, you would see that those lines on the bottom, there's a horizon line. And there's little lines going down, and each of those little lines going down below the horizon is a Bible verse that refers to Jesus. And on the right side, of you'll see one big line down the center. That's kind of Old Testament, New Testament division. In the right side, you have all of the things that in the New Testament that talk about Jesus. On the left side, you have all the Old Testament verses that looked forward to Jesus. Or as, as a friend of mine said, the Old Testament is Jesus concealed. The New Testament is Jesus revealed. All of Scripture talks about Jesus, and he is the most important part of that. And so in Genesis, we see in the beginning God. God was the beginning of the foundation of creation. Now, there's some a lot of discussion on, on creation and beginnings. And one I think one of the best... Um, Descriptions, one of the best general examples, if I can say it that way, of creation versus evolution. And, you know, it's not just creation versus evolution. There's creation, and then there's those that believe, well, maybe God started the creation process, but then he kind of backed away and let things go. Uh, there's others that believe he created every single thing. And one of my theology professors in Bible college said, gave to me anyway, one of the best descriptions of how to handle that whole thing. And what he said was this, he said, you know, if we were standing, if you and I were standing on a street corner, uh, and I'm on the northeast corner, and you're on the southwest corner, so we are on opposite edges, and our mothers are driving two cars that come together, and, and they crash at the intersection. They don't get hurt, don't worry. They crash at the intersection. I'm going to see the same thing that you're going to see. But what my story will be, will be slanted towards the fact that your mom was in the wrong and my mom was an innocent victim of this car crash. That's just the way our minds would work, is, is we would look with a perspective of what we believe. And so there's those that have a hard time believing God created the heavens and the earth. But I... I would beg to differ with them in saying the Bible says that. And here's the thing about the Bible, and here's the thing as we go through the Bible, um, because there's going to be some weeks where we're going to deal with some topics that might be difficult, might be uh, offensive in a sense to you too. Uh, one of the things we need to realize is that you can't take parts of the Bible and not all of the Bible. It's an all or nothing thing. And and I think this um, this graphic that I show explains why. You can't take one little part and just say no. Nah. Um, one of the things, you know, getting back to this graphic thing too, is um, I can pretty much guarantee you that anybody that doesn't believe the Bible and thinks the Bible is full of contradictions, or one of the ones I love is, you know, looking at this graphic and, and somebody says, well, the Bible is just a bunch of disconnected stories that people wrote. Can you imagine if that were true, how difficult it would be for us, for you as a writer, for I as a writer, to write the Bible and to write something later on that's going to intersect perfectly with any of the, the Old Testament, it, it would be impossible to do that. And so when we study the Bible, we need to realize that we need to come with a uh, preconceived or predetermined um, uh, 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 outlook on how we really believe. 
um, if I believe that God is sovereign, and if I believe that God created the heavens and the earth, and not just that he created the heavens and the earth, but he started that process and, and everything that he says is true, then I can't take little bits and pieces and say, well, I believe this part, but I don't believe that part, because you can't do that. In the beginning, God, the God is the foundation of creation. And I love fall. This morning, I don't know where you're growing up or where you're living and if you looked outside this morning, but uh, this morning, the uh, sunrise here was just fabulous. The whole eastern sky looked like it was on fire. Uh, just brilliant, brilliant colors. And then you add to that the, uh, the fact that we have trees uh, across our field that are maple, so they were ablaze with color too. It was just amazing. I, I tried to take a picture of it camera didn't do justice to God's beauty. It rarely does. Uh, we found that out this last summer where we went out to uh, Utah and to Colorado to the mountains. And, uh, you know, we took a bazillion pictures and, and now we look at them and it's like, wow, they're cool, but it doesn't do justice to God's beauty. So anyway, I digress. We need to realize that God is the creator of all things and he's the basis of everything we believe. Therefore, for example, and we'll talk about this a little bit more next week, when it comes to the idea of gender identity, I'm sorry, but there's really only three genders in my book. And I could get in trouble for this. Maybe Facebook will man me. I don't know. There's males, there's seeing males, and there's those that are confused. Because that's just the way it is. If you don't believe what God says in his word about that, that we're created in his image, that he's the one that determined our gender in the womb. If we don't believe that, then the rest of the Bible doesn't matter. On the other hand, if you do believe that, then we need to work towards uh, healing. We need to work towards reconciliation. We need to work towards how do we, we deal with those issues in life. In the beginning, God, God is the one that created male and female. God is the one that ordained marriage. God is the one that set in place what morality is and what immorality is. God is the one, the creator of love. He's the creator of sex. He's the creator of, of all these things. And the reason for that was for a relationship. See, and that's the thing about Genesis. Another thing that's really cool about Genesis, I think, is to me, uh, Genesis is really uh, the Bible in one book. Because Genesis talks about, first of all, creation, which you know, we're talking a little bit about tonight. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, to be honest with you, because um, you need to make the determination whether you're going to believe in faith that God created the heavens and the earth or not. Uh, that's as simple as that. I believe God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, I believe that his creation lasted seven 24-hour days. Um, there's others that disagree with me. Um, and to be honest, whether you believe media or not, there's no science to prove things one way or the other because nobody was there. So I believe that God created the heavens and the earth. The creation was that. The second part of Genesis, and we'll talk a little bit about this next week, is the fact that uh, about sin, how sin entered the world and, and what that really did to us. And I think sometimes we don't realize that. We'll spend a little time on that next week. The third part of Genesis is talks about grace. And in a nutshell, that's what the Bible is all about. God created, we messed up, and God redeems. That's what the Bible is all about. And it's all wrapped up in this first book of Genesis when it talks about creation, when it talks about the fall of man, when it talks about how God from the very, very beginning began the redemptive process to lead us towards Jesus. And that's the other thing that I want to point out tonight is the fact that, uh, you know, I said earlier about the, the graphic that I just showed you about how Jesus is intertwined in all of this. Uh, even in Colossians, Paul writes and he says, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. You see, there's some people that don't believe in the Trinity, for example. You know, we believe in, in God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Can't explain that. It's three separate people, three separate offices, but one person. However that works, I don't know, but the Bible talks about it. In the first in Genesis it says, Let us 
create. Let us, let us, let us. And here, Jesus taught, or Paul writes and says, Jesus was there at creation. There's other places where it talks about the Holy Spirit being involved in that. The three of them were there. And so what we need to realize is all of creation, all of the Bible rather, refers to Jesus. And the reason that's important is because there's some people that believe, you know, it doesn't matter uh, <clears throat> what you believe. As long as you believe in something, that's the important thing. And how intolerant can we be as Christians to believe that there's only one way to heaven? That's just ridiculous. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. And if God isn't in the beginning, then God isn't in the end. So we as believers in, in Jesus have uh, a huge task ahead of us in the sense that we need to believe that God is the center of all things and what he says is true, which will put us at uh, odds with a lot of people right now. But the second thing we need to do, and I think this is the most important thing, and that is that we need to find ways in our life that we can gracefully and mercifully and lovingly uh, reach out to those people that oppose us, that are against us, and, and live in such a way that they see by our actions and by our love what the love of God is really about. And that, in a nutshell, is verse number one of the Bible. In the beginning, God. So let me leave you uh, this evening with just just a thought and that is um, <clears throat> if in the beginning God if God is the creator and the permeator the if, if God is in every aspect of life um, where is he in your life um, is he at the center of everything and that's difficult in this society because there's so many other things screaming at us uh, for our attention but God wants all of us. And, and the, the beauty of that is if we give God all of us, somehow everything else works out too. So in the beginning, God, where does God fit in to your world? Uh, is he indeed the source of everything through your life? Or is he just an add-on? You know, uh, for example, you may have a, you know, you're on the, the internet. Uh, you're using an internet browser uh, to watch this. Um, and there's within the browsers, there's things called add-ons, uh, which you can help, which help to um, make the browser better. Um, God shouldn't be an add-on. God is the center of everything that you do. Your thoughts, your uh, actions, your opinions, your beliefs. If you're a believer in Jesus, then in the beginning, God, and God should be the center of that. So my prayer for us, because I struggle too, my prayer for us is that uh, maybe even as we go through this study of the Old Testament, we would be able to make him the center of everything that we do, even when it puts us at odds with other people. Thanks for listening in. Um, I don't see if there's anybody online. Um, if you are online and you've been watching or will be watching, uh, if you wouldn't mind just identifying yourself so I know that I'm not just totally alone when I talk. But uh, it's uh, just been great talking with you. And um, let's, again, close in a word of prayer. And then next week we will continue our mini-study of the book of Genesis. Like I said, we're going to spend three weeks in Genesis and then hopefully uh, do a one-week study on uh, the other books of the Bible as we go through the Old Testament. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, uh, you're an amazing Jesus. You're an amazing uh, Son of God. Uh, amazing God. And I thank you for so many things that you've done for us. I pray for those that are listening tonight. I ask that in the midst of all the turmoil we have in this world, uh, we would remember what it means in the beginning, God. And that regardless of what might be going on around us, you would help us as believers in Jesus to put you at the center of our life, to make you the foundation of our thoughts, our actions, our emotions, our opinions. Uh, may we ground all of that in what your word says, especially when it contradicts what's going on around us in our society. And I pray these things in your name. Amen.
Thanks for listening, everybody. And uh, I will see you all next week. And uh, if you're part of the Zion family, we'll see you Sunday. Otherwise, if you're part of the Built with Grace family, we'll see you next Wednesday.